and we have a very special series lined up for you over the next few days. Crypto 101, your one-stop shop for all you need to know about cryptocurrencies. Technology has changed the way people work, shop and even pay for goods. Companies and consumers don't necessarily prefer cash anymore and this behavior is giving way to contactless payments like Google Pay and other digital wallets. With a quick wave of a smartphone, consumers can pay for items at digital registers. Now a new payment system is emerging, cryptocurrencies. Probably everyone has heard about Bitcoin by now, but did you know there are more than 2000 different types of cryptocurrencies out there and more are being developed every day. So what are these cryptocurrencies that everyone's talking about? Well, cryptocurrencies are essentially digital tokens. They're not physical coins or cash. They are a type of digital money that allows people to make payments directly to each other through an online system. They were set up to allow peer-to-peer -peer transactions without need for a bank instead of being physical money uh, and being carried around and exchanged in the real world. Cryptocurrency payments exist purely as digital entries into an online database that describes specific transactions. Now, when you transfer cryptocurrency funds, the transactions are recorded in a public ledger. You store your cryptocurrency in a digital wallet. Our usual currencies are subject to a lot of rules and regulations. Central banks of various countries govern their currencies. They control the exchange rates. They decide how much money to print and intervene regularly in forex markets. Now, in 2008, after the global credit crisis, a need was felt to democratize how currencies are held, exchanged and regulated. That year, an anonymous person under a pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto invented Bitcoin. Cryptocurrencies are more democratic in nature. You can use them in any part of the world, buy as much as you want and use them anywhere. There's a network of people and their computers which maintains a ledger. Any exchange of the cryptocurrency must be validated by all those who are present in that network. The ledger then gets updated to reflect the transaction. Now, this technology is called blockchain. Well, blockchain is a technology on which Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency works. It's nothing but a sophisticated record maintaining system run by several users in a decentralized way. When a Bitcoin is exchanged, a block of data, an alphanumeric code that signifies the cryptocurrency, its quantum and value, it's created and shared across all the computers attached to that network. Think of this block as a series of such transactions. Once the block is verified, a formal record gets entered into the decentralized database for everyone to see. Then, when that same Bitcoin is sought to be sold again, another block gets created. The previous transaction, however, is not erased, so one must remember that. The new block gets attached to the old block to form a chain for everybody to see that trade. This way of record keeping also means that the transaction cannot be reversed. Now, like traditional currencies, cryptocurrencies also express value in units. For instance, you can say I have two and a half Bitcoin, just as you would say I have 250 rupees. Some people also put it in the same bracket as gold as cryptos are also finite in number and in supply and they need to be mined. Now, what is Bitcoin mining? It is the process by which new Bitcoins are entered into circulation, but it's also a critical component of the maintenance and development of the blockchain ledger. It is performed using very sophisticated computers which solve extremely complex math problems. Cryptocurrency mining is painstaking, costly and only sporadically rewarding. Nonetheless, mining has a magnetic appeal for many investors, especially ones who are interested in cryptocurrency because of the fact that miners are rewarded for their work with crypto tokens. When Bitcoin mining first started, the reward was 50 Bitcoin. But as dictated by the coins creator, the reward is cut in half roughly every four years. So as of Feb 2021, miners received 6.25 Bitcoin for every new block. They mine nearly 250K dollars based on today's market value. They also get to keep the transaction fees from the trades in that block. It's like solving a puzzle, essentially. Bitcoin miners receive Bitcoin as a reward for completing blocks of verified transaction, which are added to the blockchain. Mining rewards are paid to the miner who discovers a solution to a complex hashing puzzle first and the probability that a participant will be the one to discover the solution is related to the portion of the total mining power of the network. In a nutshell, crypto miners verify the legitimacy of transactions to keep or rather to reap the awards of their work in the form of cryptocurrencies. In addition to lining the pockets of miners and supporting the Bitcoin ecosystem, mining serves another vital purpose. 
It is the only way to release new cryptocurrency in circulation. In other words, miners are basically minting currency. There are downside risks to trading in uh, cryptocurrencies as well. Apart from decentralization and democracy, the basic idea of cryptocurrency is that there must be no restriction or control. Cryptocurrencies do not maintain your records. When you exchange cryptocurrency, all that gets stored in the decentralized ledger we just told you about is the fact that currency was exchanged. Your identity does not get stored. Buyers and sellers of Bitcoin do not get to know each other's identity. Hence, it's also difficult to tax Bitcoin and therefore a loss of revenue for the government as well. You can buy almost anything on the dark web without your identity being revealed and that is a real danger in popularizing cryptocurrencies. But most importantly, this anonymity in cryptocurrencies can give rise to terror funding and even money laundering. There have been many ransomware attacks in the past where websites of large companies have been held hostage. These cyber criminals demanded cryptocurrencies as ransom so they wouldn't be identified or tracked. So as we say, for any other avenues of investing, one must be aware of the risks and dangers involved in investing. Um, even for cryptocurrencies, you must make an informed decision after weighing in all the pros and cons.